Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Mikna's fifth and final virtual halaka. Can you hear me? Okay, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for joining on time. I'm Mantasha and I'm your host for today. This series is presented by MCNA. So you guys know that Ramadan is coming and Muslims all around the world are feeling excited and they're getting ready. This year, Ramadan is going to be a little unique because of this whole Corona thing. So today we're going to learn about how to better prepare ourselves for having a blessed and productive Ramadan. So as of right now, we have 315 people who have joined, mashallah. As we wait for more people to join, let's begin the icebreaker activity. The icebreaker is share your favorite thing or what you look forward to in Ramadan. So you can type your answers in the questions box. So this year, my friends and I have challenged each other to complete reading the entire Quran during Ramadan. So I'm looking forward to working on that. And let's see your responses now. Okay, samosas, reading Quran, fasting all 30 days. That's great. Laylatul Qadr, seeing family. Oh, biryani. Okay, alhamdulillah. So we're all pretty excited for Ramadan, mashallah. So as you guys may already know, MCNA is also suggesting some fun daily activities. These activities can be found on our social media pages like Facebook and Instagram, or you can find them in the handout section on your control panel. The activities for week five begin tomorrow. And don't forget to take a picture of your project and send it to us at mcnayymj.socialmedia at gmail.com. Can we have the next slide? Aiza Sheikh from New Jersey shared lessons learned from the life of Prophet Yusuf Abira from New Hampshire and Amir from Washington shared their reflections about the boycott from last week's virtual halakha. Here we have some boredom buster spinners from Yasser from Ohio, Ibrahim and Monha from the UK, and Amir from Washington. Terrific job to all of you. Once again, if you want to share your work as well, email us your pictures at mcnayymj.socialmedia uh, at gmail.com. Before we begin, we have a few announcements. Prime Times are monthly online webinars organized by Mikna. The recordings can be found on our YouTube channel. MCNA also offers YMG courses in the spring and fall. There's also a companion magazine for kids, which is written by kids all across the country. There are two magazine issues a year, so if you're good at writing, feel free to send your poems, essays, or recipes to us. The magazine also offers all sorts of fun competitions where you can participate and win prizes. There is MCNA's annual Journey Through the Quran course, which will be coming up during Ramadan, inshallah. This is a great way to learn about what is being told to us in the Quran. It's a three week long course and there will be three sessions a week with a variety of speakers. Please register if you haven't already. It's going to be really fun, inshallah. 
The flyer will be shared with you through WhatsApp groups and can be found on our social media pages. Last but not least, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find our program recordings. All right, let's start today's program with Tilawat of Quran. I'll recite Surah Qadr, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khayrun min alfi shar. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العظيم I would like to introduce Sister Muniba, today's speaker. Sister Muniba is 23 years old and is a nursing student. She has been through MCNA and YMJ and she is teaching at the MCNA classes in Southern California. In her spare time, she likes to color. Now I'll turn it over to Sister Muniba. Jazakallah khair, Mantasha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. So as Mantasha has already introduced me, my name is Muniba, and I will be your speaker for today. And Today, inshallah, we will be doing a Welcome Ramadan program. So, a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlil uqtatan min li thani yafqahu qawli. So, what is Ramadan? Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and the month of the Quran. 23 years of divine revelation began during this month. It was inside of the cave called Hira that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, interacted with Angel Jibreel and was given the first revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he would often spend time in this cave in meditation and seclusion from the world around him. He used to go up and he used to think about you know, what was going on in his society and what, you know, what he can do to make things better and how just to make how just to make overall make things better, right? And so one night when the Prophet was up there, Angel Jibreel came down and visited him, right? And he was asked to read, Iqra, right? And the Prophet as you all know, you know, he could not read, right? So he told the angel, Angel Jibreel, he said, like, I don't know how to read. And then Angel Jibreel was asked him again, read, and the Prophet, Again, he said, I do not know how to read. Then on the third time, um, Angel Jibreel said, Read in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clinging substance. Read and your Lord is the most generous who taught by the pen, taught man that which he not knew, not. This is the moment that changed the entire world to this day. As we all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he took a civilization that was arrogant and ignorant and backwards and made them into good Muslims. Their story is a constant reminder year after year of what could be done if we followed the Quran and Sunnah. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created you and me and a part of his mercy and light is that he has bestowed knowledge upon us. We are encouraged throughout the Quran to seek knowledge and act in accordance with it. So during Ramadan, remember that this is a time of worship when you can celebrate the Quran by doing what those first revelations stated, read. So I see you guys are asking questions. So I would I'm gonna ask you questions throughout this entire program and I would love for you guys to answer. So what happens in Ramadan that you cannot see?
Shaitan gets locked up. Shaitan's in jail. Laylatul Qadr, Shaitan's locked up. Angels will be around you. Yeah, these are all correct answers, right? So Shaitan is locked up. Our biggest enemy is locked up and the doors of mercy are opened, right? With Shaitan being locked up, it is easier for us to do good things. This includes reading Quran, asking for mercy, doing good deeds, and watch them multiply in this month, right? So, right, so it's a Ramadan, as I said earlier, it's a month of Quran, it's a month of mercy, and it's also a month of fasting, right? So there is an ayah in the Quran from Surah Baqarah, ayah number 183, oh, 183. Oh, you who have believed, Decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. Now, who do you think this ayah was talking about when it says decreed up, it was also decreed upon those before you? Who is this ayah talking about? The believers, prophets, us. So very specifically, so you guys are hitting it very broad, Khalifa's Muslims believers. Right. So specifically, this ayah was talking about the Jews and the Christians, right? Exactly. Okay, I heard, I saw just I saw someone just write the answer, right? So the Jews and the Christians. So they used to fast as well, and they were asked to fast before um, as well. So for example, Isa alayhi salam, um, his mother Maryam alayhi salam, she kept a fast from talking. Right. Similarly, Muslims today, we fast from food and drink from sunup to sundown. Now, the question that I have for you guys is why do we fast? To be patient, to lose weight for many reasons. So we can feel the pain of the poor to become closer to Allah to please Allah, right? So these are all correct answers, right? So if, I mean, just as you guys were giving your answers, you know, if you ask other Muslims why we fast in Ramadan, many people will say that it is to empathize with the poor who often go hungry because they have no food. Some will answer that is an obligation to fast in Ramadan um, as it is one of our five pillars of Islam. Others will say that it is to purify our hearts and to renew our faith while seeking forgiveness. And this is all true. However, these three points lead us into having taqwa, right? And what is taqwa? Taqwa means to have God consciousness in all you do, right? It is more than just fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is doing our best to live a lifestyle and make choices which are pleasing to our Lord and increase our piety. So by us helping our brothers and sisters in Islam, connecting with the people who are less fortunate, realizing that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than we need our necessities, you know, by us following our Lord's commands and by us trying to purify our hearts and renew our faith, you know, these actions will lead us into becoming more grateful. And in turn, our iman rises and so does our taqwa. So taqwa and iman, they go hand in hand, right? So one cannot go without the other. When we increase our acts of worship, this tends to increase our iman. As our iman rises, inshallah, this will also help us to increase our taqwa. So Ramadan is essentially a jumpstart for us. So think about a toy that you guys probably have, maybe in a tablet, a phone, something that you need to recharge, right? So uh, when it is low on battery, you know you have to go and charge it. Right? And nine out of 10 times, you'll probably charge it way before it's actually supposed to die, right? Once it hits 25%, okay, we, you know, we go and plug in our phones or, you know, whatever we need, we're, whatever we're using. The same idea here, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's recharging us. He's given us Ramadan for us to jumpstart or recharge our iman and go towards him in goodness, right? So Ramadan in quarantine 2020. How do you guys think things will be this Ramadan? Sad? <laughs> Different? 
less biryani someone said that's really funny awkward difference so lonely easy if they're at home all right so you guys you know get the gist of it this ramadan is going to be different you know than what we're normally used to you know due to the unfortunate circumstances that is currently our reality we're not allowed to leave the houses our houses unless we are getting necessities you know schools are closed um, our parents most of them are working from home we can't see our friends we can't go over to our friend's house you know we can't go to the movies restaurants ice cream stores it's you know it's all out of the question and on top of that the masjids are closed too right this ramadan will be different because we are not going to be able to go to the masjid for taraweeh anymore you know there's no more iftar parties no more people coming over you know no more programs at the masjid no hanging out with our friends at the masjid and you know we are we are still unsure if we'll be able to celebrate eid this year or not you know it's going to be really difficult and i know we've all been looking forward to ramadan since the last year so but although this is a really difficult situation for all of us, you know, we have to remember the whole purpose of Ramadan is that, you know, it's to be grateful. You know, yes, we don't have taraweeh, yes, we don't have, you know, iftar parties or, you know, yes, we don't have, you know, our friends coming over, but alhamdulillah, we have food, you know, we have family, we have a home, right? We are alive today and, you know, we are alive today and we will be fasting inshallah. So let's not focus on the negative and let's focus on the positive and you know inshallah this will help us get into a routine so uh, what do you guys normally do in ramadan listen to surah rahman a lot fast go to the mesh sleep <laughs> do good deed great so most of us Right, all your answers are correct, but most of us we sleep, right? We stay awake all night, we sleep after Fajr, and maybe we wake up for Zuhr or Asr, right? And then in this time, you know, we are tired, we're cranky, we we're hungry, and overall it's just not a pretty picture. And you know, we often forget that fasting is a test, and with Shaytan locked away, we are the ones that are showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how much work shaitan has done for us right uh for example have you guys ever been on a tire swing right so that's like literally a tire and it's like hanging from the pole and when you're on it and if someone's spinning you right even if they're going to stop spinning you you're going to continue spinning correct right this is what shaitan is doing to us for the whole entire year right we're sitting on a swing and shaitan's is constantly spinning us so do you think that even though shaitan's not here are we still spinning yeah we are still spinning right because he's done so much work so we need to stop that swing we need to break that swing and we need to be like no we are going to do better right we are just causing ourselves to be um if we're not doing anything that's not different than what we're normally doing you know we're just causing ourselves um harm right we're not doing any good right and um we're just going to be hungry and we're not going to gain anything out of it there is a hadith by the prophet ﷺ where he says a person might fast and he gets nothing from his fast but hunger we do not want to be these people we want to make sure that our fasts are counting right we want to make sure that we are doing the best of our fast and that we're using the best of our time and this is why it is so important to get yourself into a routine right so we will start with suhoor suhoor as you guys might already know suhoor is the meal that you eat before you start fasting we wake up in the middle of the night and we uh we eat uh before the sun rises so in the Quran, there's an ayah that says, and eat and drink until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct to you from the black thread of night. Then complete the fast until the sunset. This is Surah Baqarah, ayah 187. So can you imagine having to go outside with a white thread and putting it up to the sky to see if you can distinguish it from the night sky? No, right? It's gonna be so difficult. And not only that, we're half asleep and we're eating suhoor, right? So how can we go outside and, you know, try to figure out whether it's time or not? 
But alhamdulillah, we, we have technology now and we have a chart that is on our fridge. And uh, we just have to follow the start times and the breaking or fast time, right? And then the other meal that we have is iftar, right? Iftar is the meal we eat to break the fast. While you can break your fast with anything, it is sunnah to break the fast with dates and water. Just as it is sunnah to delay the suhoor, it is sunnah to hasten if thought. That means when you hear the adhan for maghrib and the sun is beginning to set, it is not encouraged to pray without breaking your fast first. Rather, you should give yourself relief and enjoy some water and dates. This will help you focus on your prayers. So since we are on the topic of food, um, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys normally eat to break your fast? Candy, samosa, <laughs> dates, water, samosa, samosa. So a lot of samosa is going on here. The bar, I don't know what that is, but that's interesting. Pakora, water, dates, right? So fruits right so we normally don't eat the healthiest of meals especially in ramadan right when our moms are cooking the most incredible foods ever that are fried and delicious right it is so important for us to eat a balanced meal right i know when you're fasting you want to eat everything right um i usually after uh, I used to go to the nearest fast food place and get fries and onion rings, mozzarella sticks, and even a soda. It'd be really bad, but that's all I would want. But eating too much or eating sugary or oily foods can cause your stomach to hurt, right? It is very important to incorporate vegetables and fruits in your diet. And it's also important to keep yourself hydrated with plenty of water, right? So there's a saying like, you know, eat the rainbow. And I'm not talking about you know, the Skittles rainbow, I'm talking about, you know, your food pyramid here, right? You have to make sure that you eat moderate amounts of food uh, from each level of the pyramid. Um, can you still have candy though? Yes, you can have candy, but I wouldn't recommend eating a lot of it. Okay, so why, why is it important to eat healthy when fasting, right? So what happens to our bodies while fasting? So the food that we eat is broken down by small enzymes in our gut and eventually it ends up as little molecules in our blood, right? So uh, foods like, you know, rice and bread and sugars, like they, they're, break, they're broken down into sugar, which our cells use for energy. So if our cells don't use it all, we store it in our fat cells as fat. Right. So the whole purpose of fasting is to have the body use whatever it has stored away as energy. Right. But if we are constantly eating and we're constantly feeding our body. Right. Then the body is not able to use the reserve that it's kept. Right. So then that's when it becomes unhealthy. And that's why it's so important to have a balanced meal. Now, I have a question for you guys. Does everyone need to fast? You guys are right. So no, yeah, ev not everyone needs to fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this easy on us, right? So if you're too young or too old or too sick, you are, are excused from fasting, right? So we talked about suhoor and we talked about iftar and, you know, we talked about eating good balanced meals. So now what should we do in between? We know this year Ramadan is going to be different. So how can we make the best of our Ramadan? Any ideas? Have a chart tracker. That's really good. Make goals that are possible pre extra namaz. These are all really good answers, right? So um, have a routine, right? So we talked about having routine, keeping a Ramadan journal or a tracker, right? So write down the list of a list of things that you want to complete in Ramadan, and then every single day, if you do it, check it off. I love tracker stuff like this because. Every single time I would track, uh, I would check off a box, it made me feel so good about myself, right? 
So not only that, like we have time, we have more time. We don't have school necessarily, you know, we don't have work. We have more time on our hands. So we have more time to read the Quran, right? So we can fast every single day for those of us who weren't doing so, or, you know, maybe some of us were only doing half fast. Maybe now's the time we could do a full day of fasting, right? And another thing is we can pick out bad habits that we know that we commit and try to break it in Ramadan, right? For example, you know, people who use social media, maybe we don't use too much social media in Ramadan, right? Maybe we don't watch too many TikToks or make too many TikToks. Or, you know, for the kids who game, maybe you should, you know, cut down on your gaming and do something else instead. Or maybe if you don't game, you know, and you just watch people stream, then you know, maybe you should cut down on how much you're watching, right? We have to, we have to see how much, uh, we have to see how much time we're spending on things that are not necessarily important, right? And so we've picked a bad habit. And now like pick a good habit that you would like to do instead, right? So maybe you could read an Islamic book, right? Or maybe you can help your mothers in the kitchen, right? How many times are we helping our mothers during Suhoor time? Or um, you know, how many times are we helping them during iftar time? Like we're all hungry, we're all, you know, struggling. So it's important to help everyone, right? Maybe we can pick up a hobby or make sure you're praying all five of your prayers, right? So Fajr and uh, Maghrib is basically set for us, right? Because right after Suhoor, we pray Fajr and right after iftar, we pray Maghrib, right? But what about the prayers that are left, right? Are we, are we, uh, consistent on our um, prayers with that, right? So if you're not consistent, make an effort to be consistent. And let's say you are consistent, then maybe add your sunnah, uh, uh, sunnah prayer, or maybe your nawafil prayers. And let's say you already do that too, right? And everyone is home, which is a benefit of what's happening right now. So maybe try to have your whole entire family pray together for every prayer, right? You can read more Quran and someone asked if I can watch Islamic videos. Of course, you can watch Islamic videos, right? As long as you're learning and you're interacting, and you're doing something good, right? Um, collect money to give uh, for sadaqah, right? And one important thing is, you know, we are so far away from family, right? So it's important to keep in touch. So talk to your grandparents, talk to your aunts and uncles, right? Ask them how they're doing, right? And so... It's also important to know what you want to do, right? We get really excited and say that we are going to do so many things in Ramadan, which is great. But also make also most of the times we can never finish that list. So make sure that whatever you guys choose to do, you make them into small achievable goals. For example, if you want to read Quran every single day, maybe try reading one page with each prayer. And if that's too much for you, then that's okay. Do half a page, right? Maybe do a couple of ayahs or whatever you can commit to. So for example, in my family, my mom used to try to get me and my siblings to read the whole Quran in, uh, during the month of Ramadan, right? So we'd try to do uh, a juz every single day and I could never do it. And I would get so upset that I could never finish it, okay? And so um, it came down to me realizing that, you know what, like I can't do it. So I'm gonna try doing something smaller. So I just do a page every single day. Right. And then if I can do more, then I'll do more. Right. So same thing. You guys should make small achievable goals that you can do. And then it make you make it makes you feel good when you complete these goals. Right. So now we are going to talk about Layatul Qadr. Right. So if you are given the chance to take all your points and multiply them by 70, would you choose to do so? Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that extra credit in Ramadan. And on Layat al-Qadr, he is giving us even more on this night. So this night falls on an odd number night during the last 10 days of Ramadan. Right? Anas ibn Malik reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, this month has come to you and in it there is a night that is better than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of its of whoever is deprived of it is deprived deprived of all goodness, and no one is deprived of its goodness except one who is truly deprived. Right. So 
can you imagine that one night is better than a thousand months? So I actually had my husband do the math, right? So if we were to do ibadah on Laylatul Qadr and it was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would be the same as if we were to do ibadah for every day for 82 years. Can you imagine? One night is equivalent to 82 years of worship. That's crazy. I mean, we don't even know if we're going to be um, living till we're 82, right? So, okay. Um, the, the barakah and um, observing the Qadr, there's so much of it and it's it's so great subhanAllah so we should try I know we're going to be at home there's not going to be there's not going to be qiyam at the masjid but we're going to try at home to you know observe the Qadr right. so alhamdulillah what you need to remember is Ramadan is the month of mercy and of Quran, right? There are many opportunities for us to get good deeds and ask Allah for forgiveness. We need to be grateful. We need to time manage well. We need to create realistic goals to achieve. You know, we don't want to be amongst those who do not take advantage of this month. We want to be among those who enter the doors of Rayyan, which is a door in Jannah specifically for the people who fast, inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, that was my portion of Ramadan. And now we're going to focus on the name of Allah that means the pardoner and forgiver. Do you guys know what that name is? So some people said no, some people said it's Ghafoor. So the name that I'm specifically talking about is Al Afu. Right? The definition of al afu is the pardoner or the forgiver. And there is this dua that I would love for you guys to memorize. Um, it is, Allahumma innaka afuwan tuhibbul afu fa'fu anni. Right? Oh Allah, you are the one who forgives. Uh, who, oh Allah, you are the one who forgives greatly and you love to forgive, so forgive me. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ said that this is the best dua to make on Layatul Qadr. Right. So I want to talk about two aspects of this uh, dua. So one is the word afu, and then we also hear the word maghfira when we're talking um, about forgiveness, right? So we're going to talk about the difference between the two. So um, I'm just waiting for the slide to pop up for you guys. Okay. So what is the difference between maghfira and afu? Right? So maghfira is Allah to forgive you for the sin, but the sin will still be registered in your book of deeds. Right? So uh, maghfira is Allah's forgiveness for your sin, but on the day of judgment, it will be written on your record. Allah will ask you about it, but he won't punish you because of it. Right? And afu is for Allah to forgive you for the sin and delete it from your book of deeds as if it did not happen, Allah it, Afu is Allah's pardon for your sin. It will be completely erased from your record and Allah won't ask you about it on the day of judgment, right? So which one would you guys rather ask for, right? Afu or maghfira, right? Do you want it completely out of your books or, you know, maybe you still want it there and maybe, you know, you, you know as long as you're not getting punished for it, it's okay. Afu, exactly, right? So think about it in the terms of getting in trouble at school, right? Um, I don't know about your guys' school, but when I was in high school, if you got a certain amount of detentions or citations, you weren't allowed to uh, do school activities at the end of the year. So we would have certain assemblies or certain events. But if you had a certain amount of citations or detentions, you weren't allowed to go, right? So it was on their record for the whole entire year, right? So that's not what we want. We want to ask for, uh, we want to ask um, Allah for our forgiveness and we want to make sure that it, that sin is not on our book of deeds at all. We don't want it at all. We want it completely eradicated, right? So inshallah, in this Ramadan, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us from all the bad deeds that we did. And we want to ensure that there is no record of it, inshallah. So, we have now completed the, um, I guess, the lecture portion of this uh, halaqa. And now we're going to go into um, activities.
So one of the activities that I found for you guys is um, uh, making chocolate and almond date balls. Um, so for those of us who don't like to eat our kujur or our dates plain, this is a great way to make something different, to add um, chocolate or nuts or different things um, to uh, the dates. So we are going to watch the video. Oh, someone says that they're allergic. So if you are allergic, this um, recipe is uh, very easy and you can substitute things that you uh, don't want in there. So like if you don't like almonds particularly, maybe you can put peanuts or if you don't like nuts altogether, maybe you can find something else to put. Um, in this one specifically, they put um, coconut shavings. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the video for you guys. Wow, a lot of you are allergic. So, I don't know. Can you guys put, can you guys see the video? Okay, so some people saying that they can see it, some people saying that it's laggy. But I'm going to go ahead and restart it and I'm just going to kind of narrate for you what they're doing. And you can always ask for this recipe as well. So basically they took dates and they sliced them and then they added flaked almonds to it and then one tablespoon of uh, melted coconut oil and one tablespoon of cocoa powder. Right, and then they put one teaspoon of cinnamon and a pinch of salt. Um, so then they mixed it together and then they put these ingredients into a food processor. So I would highly recommend that you guys do this with your parents and they blended it until it became really soft. So I know that the video is not doing great with you guys, but um, imagine, um, you know, when you're making cake pops, like how soft the cake batter is and you can mold it um you could um so that's how, basically how soft is supposed to be someone asks if what if you don't have a food processor um i want to say you can use a blender but i haven't been cooking for long so you can ask your mom to double check with that <laughs> right so once um the mixture is made just roll it into a ball with your hands and then this person specifically in the video uh rolled the balls into uh, the coconut shavings and then they put it in the freezer for 30 minutes and um, once they put it into the freezer, um, after they're, they served it um, afterwards, and then it's like it should be like nice and uh, tough. That's basically it. I know the video was laggy for you guys. So again, if you guys want the recipe, you can always uh, YouTube it, chocolate, almond, and date balls. And again, this is um, a recipe that you guys can easily um, uh, adjust to your liking, right? And so another activity that we got, that we have for you guys is to share your Ramadan decorations. Um, so uh, we would like for you guys to decorate your houses in the spirit of Ramadan and I have some pictures of what my niece and nephew did for their house. So they had a Ramadan batter, they had stickers on their windows, and they had stuff hanging from their windows, lights, you know, signs. And then for Eid, they uh, wrapped up their gifts and they displayed it for a couple of days before, you know, until Eid happened. So these are just examples of what you guys could be doing. Um, at your house as well, right? So again, like we talked about how the Ramadan is going to be different than what we are normally used to. So, you know, take the time, decorate, get into the Ramadan spirit. And once you guys do so, you can share pictures of what you, how you guys uh, decorated your guys' house, right? So you can take a picture 
and submit it to the MCNA social media email, right? So it's mcnaymj.socialmedia at gmail.com. Or we have a Facebook, we have an Instagram, and um, we have a website. So um, you guys can share your pictures. Inshallah. And so that's it for our two activities. And now for what you guys have been waiting for since the very beginning. I saw your guys' chat and all you guys were saying was this word. So we are going to play a game of Kahoot. And yeah, look at look at all you guys. You guys are going crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Kahoot loaded. And hopefully, hopefully this is not laggy for you guys. Inshallah. So the code should be coming up shortly. Catch up this year. Wow, there's 200 of you guys. Okay, we'll give it like another minute. So whoever can join, please join. Okay, are you guys ready to start? There's people still joining. Okay, it's slowing down a little. Okay, one more minute, you guys. Okay, actual last minute, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go ahead and get started, okay? Okay, we are going to start now. Bismillah. Okay, so question one. What month was the Quran revealed in?
Great, so Ramadan. So the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. All right, so we just went over this. I don't know how you guys got this wrong, but okay. Next question. Good deeds are multiplied 70 times in Ramadan. True or false? True. Good. And at the top of the scoreboard currently is DQPVP. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. And sub to Pantato, you're in second place, and Don Don is in third place. <laughs> All right, next question, you guys. True or false? Al Afu is one of the 99 names of Allah, and it means the pardoner. True or false? True, so al afu was also in the dua that we mentioned, right? So it means the pardoner or the forgiver. Okay, let's take a look at the scoreboard now. So DQPVP is still at the top, first place, and sub to Pantato is also still in second place. And now Abdullah, he's in third place. COVID-19 is in fifth place. <laughs> Next question. Which term means your deed will be erased from your book of deeds completely? A. Qiyama, B. Afu, C. Mawfira, or D. Quran? Afu, correct. You guys are good. So afu is what we want, right? We want the deeds to be completely eradicated from our book of deeds. We don't want to be asked about it. We don't want it for it to you know, be mentioned at all. That's the afu means to get rid of it completely, right? So scoreboard. So DQPVP still at the top. Simra, A plus, she's now in, in second place. And Abdullah is still in third place. And what's my name question mark is now in fourth place. All right, you guys, you guys are doing pretty good. Fifth question, what happens to the shayateen during Ramadan? A, they're locked up. B, they go on vacation. C, they fast. Or D, they go on a cruise. A, they are locked up. <laughs> Good job. All right, scoreboard. Okay, DQPVP still at the top at first place. Simra A plus at second place. And what's my name question mark at third place now? All right, you guys. Now, question number six. How many days are in Ramadan? A, 29. B, 30. C, 28. Or D, 29 or 30. D, 29 or 30, right? So Ramadan is based off of a lunar calendar. So that's why each year it's not in uh, the same month as it was before. So it, it moves back 10 days every year. So that's why it's either 29 or 30 days. Look at the scoreboard. Simra A plus at first place. Wow. DQ PVP here at second place. What's my name? Still at third place. All right, next question. What is maghfirah? A, asking Allah to forgive you. B, name of the prayer after Asr and before Isha. C, 
mercy, asking Allah to forgive you, but the sin will still stay in your book of deeds. Or D, name of a river in Jannah. It was B, the blue option. So asking Allah to forgive you, but the sin will stay in the book of deeds. Okay, scoreboard. Simra A plus still at the top at first place. DQ PVP at second place. And Amna Texas emoji emoji at third place. True or false? Safar is a month that comes right after right before Ramadan, sorry, right? It, Safar is the month that comes right before Ramadan, true or false? False, right. Um, Safar is actually the second month that comes in our Islamic calendar, right? So it's Muharram Safa. That's a good the scoreboard. Simra still leading. Abdullah now at second place and Hai at third place. <laughs> what is the name of the special night during the last 10 days of Ramadan? A. Ramadan, B. Layatul Qadr, C. Jumma, D. Eid. D. Layatul Qadr. Good. Continue. All right. Simra still at the top. Abdullah at second place and high at third place. Ten more questions. What should we try to do in Ramadan? A. Make more TikToks. B. Sleep all day. C. Less social media. Or D. Eat a lot. B, less social media, it's correct. We have to be more conscious of our time and what we are doing with it. Okay, Simra still leading and Abdullah coming in at second. Ketchup is here at third place. <laughs> Number 11, what should we do less of in Ramadan? A, help around the house. B, pray to Allah. C, read Quran. D, watch Netflix. You watch Netflix. Good. Simra still leading. Abdullah in second and catch up this year at third. I don't lose is at fourth place. We'll see how. Let's see if I don't lose gets to the first place or not. So reconsider his name. Who delivered the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? A. Israfil. Uh, B. Jibrail. C, FedEx, or D, Mikhail? No. Right, Angel Jabril, he came down with the first revelation to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the cave of Hira. Simra still leading, Abdullah second, and Ketchup is here at third. Come on, you guys. Question 13. Where was the Prophet ﷺ when he got the first revelation? A. Medina, B. Kaaba, C. Cave Hira, or D. At home? C, cave Hira. Good. All right, so there's no change of place. Simrasa leading, Abdullah in second, and Ketchup is here at third. 
Question 14. All Muslims have to fast no matter what, true or false? False, right? The people who are too young or too old or too sick, they are they don't have to fast. They are excused from fasting. Okay. Okay. Simra still leading. Abdullah in second. Ketchup is here third. Question 15. Fasting is not a pillar of Islam. True or false? False. Fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. Oh, Simra still leading. Ketchup is here, is now in second place. Absar is in third place. Question 16. Which book was revealed in Ramadan? A. Quran, B. Injil, C. Torah or D, all of the above? So you guys are not wrong. It's actually my fault for not covering. All of our holy books were revealed in the month of Ramadan. So um, the, act, the answer is actually all of the above. But uh, again, you guys were not wrong. You guys were all technically correct. So <laughs> let's do the scoreboard. Okay, Simra still leading. Ketchup is here in second and Absar in third place. Next question. Question 17, when is it okay not to fast? A, when you're hungry, B, when you're thirsty, C, when you're traveling, D, when you have a test that day. When you're traveling, it's correct. We, if we are traveling, Allah has excused us from fasting. We just have to make it up later. All right. So Simra still leading, Ketchup is here in second place and Absar in third. All right, question 18. What is the name of the prayer that we do after Isha? A, Witter. B, Sunnah. C, Tarawih, or D, all of the above? So the answer was D, all of the above. Technically, you do pray your Sunnah after Isha, you do pray uh, Tarawih after Isha, and you do a prayer with her after Isha as well. So this, this is one of those trick questions. But again, for those of you who chose the other options, you guys were not wrong. All the options were correct. Okay, we have a completely different scoreboard. Rayan is at first place. I don't lose is back at second. Tubble Bubble is at third now. Wow. Question 19. Eid al-Adha is the Eid we celebrate right after Ramadan. True or false? False. That's correct. Eid al-Adha is what we celebrate. Um, after um, Hajj is completed, Eid al-Fitr is what we celebrate right after Ramadan. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard. Rayan is at first, Hubble Bubble at second, I don't lose is at third. 
Okay, last question. What is the best Ramadan food? <laughs> so again, you guys were not wrong. This was just a fun question that I threw in there, but it was samosa. All right, you guys, we are done with our Kahoot and Tubble Bubble is at third place. I Don't Lose is at second place. And first place is Rayan. Congratulations, you guys. You guys did a really, really good job. Fourth place was the three exclamation points and fifth place was um, the person with the potatoes um, screen name. Thank you guys so much for playing. We still have some closing remarks left, so please stay for the remainder um, of um, the program. Thank you so much. On, from my behalf, thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed um, doing this halakha with you guys, and I hope you guys benefited out of this. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Mantasha so she can do our closing remarks, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Muniba, for this fantastic session, mashallah. I loved your slides. I'm sure everyone has learned something new today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakah in your help, in your time, and make all the attendees sadqa jariya for you. Ameen. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us use what we learned today to make this Ramadan our best one yet. Ameen. Inshallah, I'll see you. Nah. I'll see you guys. Inshallah. I'll conclude this session with surah and dua. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأسر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام Jazakallah khair, Mantasha, for all your help.